Hey guys, it's Ms. Gephardt, and um, we're going to go through and do some notes on the ocean zones and exploration. So make sure you get out your pen and paper and you take down information that's relevant to that. So, some essential questions <coughs> some things you should be able to answer when you're done. You need to understand how the oceans are divided into zones. Um, you understand these divisions occur because of light, temperature, the types of life forms that live there, and the type of nutrients that are available. You also need to be able to know the types of technology that are used in various zones of the ocean because some aren't going to always be able to be used depending on depth. All right, so the starting point is the sunlight zone. So literally the sunlight zone is exactly what it sounds like. It is the zone up at top that the sunlight can completely penetrate. Um, and this extends about 200 meters deep. The temperature and light here is going to have a big range. So it's going to be um, anywhere from 104 degrees to 25, or 25, I'm sorry, 27 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So that's a pretty big jump, but you have to consider that the sunlight will be heating it up during the day and then the lack of it in the nighttime will, you know, obviously make it cooler. Um, there is enough light that any organisms like plant-wise that live in that area are going to be able to do photosynthesis. Um, some animal life that we're going to be able to see in the sunlight zone. So we've got some primary producers like plankton. So these are going to be these little um, aquatic little organisms that float around. Um, we'll see plants, there's sea grasses, lots of different fish. I mean, you can see <coughs> sharks, things like that. Other features um, that we might have or, or might be specific to the sunlight zone, um, more than 90% of the marine life is in this zone. Um, why do you think that? Let's think about that. Um, these organisms have a lot of nutrients available to them. So when we think about all of the life, we have to imagine that there's all this sunlight, it's going to cause photosynthesis. So there's organisms that are, they have food to eat. Um, there's a lot of nutrient cycling. That's why you see so much life in the upper parts of the ocean. If we were to go to the deepest parts, you're not going to see it as lively and as colorful as you would expect up here. Um, <coughs> if you're, <coughs> sorry, an organism at the shoreline, um, you're going to face a lot harsher of conditions. So you have to imagine the, um, like a starfish that's kind of stuck um, at certain parts of the day, it might be covered in water, and at certain parts of the day, it might be completely exposed. So it has to be able to adapt to both types of um, conditions. All right, sunlight zone. So when we think about technology, usually you're going to see scuba, okay? Um, because you don't have to go too far down. Um, scuba stands for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. So that's you know, this machine, the machinery that you see with the mouth and the nose and they're breathing underwater. Um, it allows for the ability to explore shallow depths. So we're only thinking like 40 meters and you only have about an hour's worth of time on a take of oxygen. So you don't have more than that um, for exploration. All right, so intertidal zone, um, we're looking <coughs> at the place where the tides occur. That's exactly what it is. Um, and this is where you'll have the high tide and the low tide. Remember, high tide, we're going to have lots and lots of water. And then when the low tide comes, all that water is going to recede. Um, but these are going to, uh, that particular zone, um, this intertidal zone is part um, within that um, sunlight zone. Those, these guys right here, let me get a pen. Mm, let's do a pen. This life right here is going to have a lot of harshness because it's covered and then it's not covered and then it's covered and it's not covered. And a lot of these guys right here are not really mobile, so they're going to kind of get stuck. All right, the toilet zone, <coughs> which is next. <coughs> God, I had a cough tonight. Um, the light zone um, of the ocean that is about two, so it's from the 200 meter mark to the 1,000 meter mark, right? So we can see that falls um, right in, in this area right here. Um, only a small amount of light is going to penetrate. It's going to likely be up at the upper portion. Um, the temperature range is going to now drop, so we don't have quite that heat that we had from the previous zone. We're looking at about 41 to 39 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Animals, we have lantern fish. Um, lantern fish is what you guys, you know, uh, uh, maybe not, not lantern fish, just kidding. Um, the rat hawk fish, squid, midwater jellyfish, so we can kind of see these different um, guys right in here. This guy's right here, this guy right here. Um, this is um, the jellyfish, this is the squid. Um, thermocline, this is something very important that we make sure we need to know. So a thermocline is a temperature, uh, a, a 
quick temperature drop. It's a zone kind of a, a, of a quick temperature drop and the thermocline is found within the zone. So it's where we see a decent drop in temperature um, within a zone and that's called the thermocline. Bioluminescent organisms. So these are the things that light up like, you know, almost like a glow stick. Um, and now we're starting to really see pressure come into play. So we got some pressure going on because we have to imagine it's being pushed down upon. Um, it could be upwards of um, 1,470 pounds per square inch or PSI. The Twilight Zone, so some technology. Um, submarines that are manned can be used. Um, so you get inside and you'd be able to drive around and um, be able to look and sometimes clasp things and bring them back into the submarine. Um, <coughs> we also have sonar to test depth of the water. Um, sonar is a ping and you probably, you think about any kind of submarine, if you've ever heard about a submarine movies or anything, you hear like a pinging. Um, what it does is it's going to send a sound wave down and it's going to, um, once the sound wave hits the bottom, it's going to return back and the time it takes to do that, you can calculate depth. And so that's how they know how deep um, the floor is. This is also where fishermen will use it to detect large schools of fish. They can tell by the ping how deep um, the fish are. All right, so the midnight zone. So we're, we're starting to get, as you can tell, we're starting to get darker and darker. So we're losing light. Um, this light zone of the ocean extends from 1,000 to 4,000 meters. So it's getting dark down here. There is no, we can see right here, there is no light. <coughs> and the temperature, we're still, you know, I mean, we're just about above freezing, probably all the way to 43 degrees. Um, so it's cold. Um, it's going to be cold pretty much the whole time because there's nothing to heat it up really. Um, we have sperm whales. Um, mostly animals that live in the depths are going to be black or white in color um, just because of the lack of light. Um, we're getting more of those bioluminescent organisms. And we can see that the pressure is definitely increasing as we're decreasing in depth or, or going downwards. Um, we don't really see, it's hard to see the humans um, exploring this in person. So a lot of times you're going to see um, ROVs, remote operated vehicles, so things that you would be operating from a ship and the vehicle would be doing all the moving and all that kind of stuff and picking up things, but there wouldn't be someone inside. ROVs are going to give us <coughs> the ability to study using different cameras at the same time, being able to look around, being able to pan, being able to grip things. So it gives us an ability that um, we can't, and we can't do it because of the pressure. Pressure, you know, I'm going to kind of kind of think about that. All right, so next we got the abyssal zone. So we're getting even deeper. I mean, 2,000 meters to 6,000, that's pretty, that's pretty deep. Um, perpetual darkness. So these organisms that live down here are very much used to this darkness. Um, they don't, they wouldn't know how to respond to light. Um, the temperature is still pretty in that, much in that cold zone. So we're in that 30s. Um, the life, so food isn't going to be like this huge abundance like we saw in the sunlight zone. It is scarce. So um, some of these organisms um, have kind of like, you can see it says a large gap, which basically means they have a big opening, like a big, big mouth area and hope to, you know, grab in any kind of food. Um, there's tripod fish. This is the black, um, back, black uh, swallower fish right here. Um, just different types of fish that we don't typically see up at the top. Hydrothermal vents are also present. This is a, something very important. Ooh, I just marked that out. But hydrothermal vents um, have been, have sort of been, they were discovered probably in the last 20 years. Um, these vents are going to spew out um, nutrient rich, rich water. So full of lots of nutrients and heat. And so the nutrients and heat that these guys spill out and spew out is going to cause um, organisms be able to live. So they're going to be able to use these nutrients to survive. Um, the abyssal zone, again, we're going to be using the ROVs and the sonar. Um, but you're not going to, you can get down there. It is dangerous. You're under a tremendous amount of pressure. So it's something to kind of consider. These are more examples of the hydrothermal vents. Here's, you know, an octopus. Finally, we're in the trenches. So this is the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean. 6,000 meters to wherever it goes. Um, temperature and light, so we're just above freezing. There is no light, <coughs> ever, 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 ever. You know, we're gonna see light. Makes sense, we're so deep in the ocean. Um, animals, 
could be starfish, some tube worms, angler fish, which you probably are familiar with on Finding Nemo, or that fish that had the little light in front of it, it's an angler fish. Um, water pressure, two tons per square inch. Um, think about this, as much as 48 747 airplanes. That's the amount of pressure you would be under in the, the, the bottom parts of the trenches. That's serious. Um, we're not going to see plant life here. And um, we have a lot of the bioluminescence going on just simply because, um, you know, that's this the best way for them to be able to sort of get around. It's a chemical reaction that's going on within them. Um, hydrothermal vents and cold seeps. These are both going to be the nutrients that sort of um, provide uh, the nutrients for the life that does live there. In the trench zones, um, we're going to um, see it's hard to actually explore. It really is. You kind of have to, you know, be trusting. I mean, think you're 6,000 plus meters below the sea level. That's pretty scary. Only three people have ever reached the deepest point, um, the Challenger Deep of the Mariana Trench in a high-tech sub. Um, so, <coughs> I mean, that's pretty impressive. Um, mostly we get it from sonar, any other echo soundings, and, you know, if we're able to get any kind of devices down there. But look, I mean, you can see super dark down here it's a lot of pressure so here is um sort of the zones again and, and you're going to see if you ever were google searching any of these you're going to see these different names you don't have to worry about those be aware of sunlight twilight midnight the abyssal and then the trench that's just kind of how it's going to go you can see it in the meters over here and you can see it in the feet over here so you kind of have a comparison um, Here's another diagram, so it's giving you, um, as we get lower, you see how this is, this up here is lots of life up here. We're getting a little bit less and then even fewer as we move downward. Um, so back to those essential questions. So ba go back, make sure you know sunlight, twilight, midnight, abyssal, and trench. Understand the amounts of light, understand the temperatures that we're talking about, be able to look at the life and, and identify those. Um, and the nutrients, and then the technology that we would see in that zone. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask your teacher.